Hi everyone, my name is Eddie Harold. I'm with PT on the net today, and I want to go over an endurance-based breathing sequence to help maximize your endurance training so you can learn to manage the cardiovascular system, manage the various departments of the brain, and we can remain calm and focused during extended periods of concentration, extended periods of deep relaxation, and always striving for perfection in the eye of adversity, even though perfection might not be part of the dialogue that we're entertaining at the time during our endurance workout. So I'll be utilizing yogic breathing exercises in the workout routine. I try to never breathe through my mouth unless I'm making progressions in the deeper parts of my cardiovascular, my neurological systems of the brain and the body. So I'm going to valve the air through my throat. Practice making this sound. I'm just humidifying the air and carbon dioxide exchange. And in that humidity, that steaming, various parts of the body begin to open up and you can tap in the deeper energy sources and you're gonna be taking less breaths per minute. And less breaths per minute trigger to the brain that you're okay. More breaths per minute trigger the fear centers of the brain into that fight or flight routine where the heart rate goes up, the blood pressure goes up, cortisol and adrenaline levels spike and we only burn glucose or sugar. As an endurance athlete, I need to constantly burn fat. My primary fuel needs to be fat metabolism. I need a strong layer of serotonin and dopamine moving through my brain and need the serotonin to move through my body so I'm always getting the most out of the least amount of energy expenditure so I'm always conserving energy and I'm being mindful of heart rates all the time. Now I'm going to begin with it's inhale up exhale back and I'm just going to inhale that ocean sound and exhale that ocean sound. I'm just going to breathe slowly So right there, I'm inhaling up, exhaling back, fundamentals of rowing, I'm breathing through my nose, everything is fine, I have that ocean sounding breath in my throat, and you can go through that little warm up as long as you'd like. The next step of what I'm going to do is I want to work on my exhale. So I'm going to be inhaling up, and I'm going to be exhaling for two strokes. So I'm lengthening the amount of time I'm going to be working the exhale muscles. So I'm going to be pushing the diaphragm further up under the lungs and heart, up underneath the chest cage of the collarbone. And I'm going to be secreting a lot of serotonin and relaxation hormones as the diaphragm pushes up and it amplifies the vagus nerve, which is a primary nerve in the body. It's a cranial nerve that signals rest and digest in the brain and body connection. So I'm inhaling up and then I'm exhaling 50%, 50%, and then I'm inhaling again. So it might be. So right there, I'm inhaling 100%, and then I'm exhaling 50% for a stroke, I'm exhaling 50% for a stroke. So there's three strokes involved there, and I'll go through that for several moments, working on the muscles of exhale. And now I'm going to reverse this. I'm going to inhale 50%, inhale 50%. So I'm going to inhale two strokes, and I'm going to exhale one stroke. Ocean sound in your throat. So it's going to be something like this. Inhale 50%. Inhale 50%, now exhale. Inhale 50. Inhale 50. Exhale. Inhale 50. 
inhale 50 exhale So you can feel by this breath regulation or conscious breathing where I'm controlling the breath, you start to sweat right away. Heart rate goes a lot higher with a lot less wear and tear on the wheel, a lot less wear and tear, ankles, knees, rotator, low back. So I'm maximizing my warm up time. I'm getting a great warm up in a short period of time. Now, we really want to get open in here. The stronger the diaphragm can become on the inhale, the greater ability it has to expand the ribs. And when the ribs become really, really elastic, you're going to get a longer inhale. It's going to be longer in time, longer in depth, longer in length, and you're going to be bringing in more energy into your lungs. You're breathing through your nose, your brain's naturally secreting nitric oxide, which is an anti-inflammatory and it's an opener to the alveoli sacs of the lungs. So you can fill your lungs to their full six liter capacity. Because as an endurance athlete, it's about inhale. I need energy and I need to stay calm. That's going to occur initially on your inhale. So another warm-up technique is inhale 50, inhale 50, there's two strokes, and then purse your lips, and you'll notice you can take in a little bit of air through your mouth. Swallow that air down into the upper lobes of your lungs, open your chest, take a stroke. So there's three strokes, and then you exhale 100. And there's four strokes, and then take a breath off, that's five. So it's inhale 50% through your nose, inhale 50% through your nose, take the rest of the air in through your mouth, open your chest, take a stroke, exhale, there's another stroke, and then take a breath off, breathing through your nose if you can on the fifth stroke. So it might look something like this. Inhale, 50. Inhale, 50. Mouth inhale. Exhale. Breath off. And then come right back. Inhale, 50. Inhale, 50. Mouth inhale, swallow it, drive, exhale, stroke off. Here we go. Repeat. Inhale 50. Inhale 50. Mouth inhale, swallow it. Nostril exhale, nostril inhale, nostril exhale. Repeat. Throw it out now. When your heart rate's coming down, really pay attention mentally and look for little improvements in the quality of your energy, the quality of your technique and rhythm. Mm. 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 
So that's a pretty good little warm up. Really inflating and opening, exhaling through the nose, getting the most out of that carbon dioxide, and then taking a resting breath. So that's a five stroke sequence. If you wanted, you could take that five stroke sequence, come out of that, then do a power 10 or a power 20, and then take, say, 20 seconds off or a minute off. So you're setting the table with the breath control, bringing your heart rate up as if you're rolling really, really hard, but you're not rolling really, really hard, are you? You're just getting the inflammation out of your organs. You're creating great posture and great rhythm at a slower tempo. You're not using a lot of energy in the primary muscles that you're going to use. And you can feel you can get pretty lathered up with this right off the bat. So the last one I want to teach is just a little bit of bellows breathing. And just imagine a bellows a blacksmith would use where you're just pumping air, the flame into your lungs and you're bringing the air in quickly and you're bringing the breath out quickly. So it's just a quick inhale and really a quick exhale where you're forcing the waste product out. <laughs> If you want to focus on the inhale and inhale quickly, you can. If not, don't worry about it because your body's going to inhale on its own. Predominantly here, what we're trying to do is focus on that quick burst of the exhale, burst of the exhale, burst of the exhale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 10 rounds of this bellows, or I call this performance breathing, and I'm going to warm up. So let's just take 10 strokes, and we're going to breathe through this performance breathing. So it's just something like this today. There's my 10. Now I'm going to inhale and hold. Now exhale. Inhale. Breathe through the throat. Really pay attention to what's happening physically, mentally, when the heart rate's coming down. I can feel my body starting to want to go faster without my mind telling it to go faster. And isn't that great? So I don't always have to whip my body into going faster. So that last technique was 10 strokes of power breathing. I'm taking two or three rounds of the power breath, focusing on that quick exhale, sparking that up, breaking up any adhesions around the exhale, which is so important to me as an endurance athlete. And then after those 10 strokes, I took a deep breath in through my nose, I secured my core, I held the breath in for five strokes. And when I have the breath held in, I can really feel where my power comes from in my low back. And I really want to be engaged in my pelvis and low back area in any endurance event, because that's where the foundation and stability of all the movement is coming from. It's coming from my low back. So being aware of where you're actually creating leverage and power is huge, because sometimes we, we lose that point or we miss that point completely. So when the breath is held in, you're really noticing where you're, the stroke is being created for you or where the pedal stroke is being made for you as a cyclist or a runner. Where does the stride come from? So identifying that mentally and staying a hold of that as sometimes in pain states we leave that point. I hold the breath in for five strokes, I drive it, and then I take it out. I could do a power 10, power 20, power 30, whatever I wanted to do, and then I just cool down. And then I'm ready to go into my, the meat of my workout. So I hope you got something out of this uh, these breathing routines are very, very powerful. My name's Eddie Harold. Great to be with you. Go be great.